<laughs> I never, sorry, I was just chatting with Kevin there. He's a pretty funny guy. Um, he doesn't mean to be funny. He just is funny. Anyway, uh, Alec Pierce, Scuba 2000, Tech Tips. And now today we're going to talk about a very controversial subject. There are lots of controversial subjects in scuba diving, you know. And we're going to talk about Solomon. Should you take a 12-week course or a weekend course? That's really controversial. Which is better, DIN valves or yoke valves? Hey, come on, please, please. I, we've been through this a dozen times, so don't get, don't get to me on that. And and I don't care what you use. I really don't. They're both great. But there is one area of controversy that's been around for quite some time, and, and, and I don't want to settle the controversy because in most cases, if you have decided or your instructor has told you or for whatever reason you've made a decision in, in, in with respect to this controversy, fine, stick with it. It's no big problem, so I'm not trying to convince you or change your mind or anything. I just I think it's important that I educate you and show you things. This controversy has to do with first stages, regulators, the first stage of a regulator. There are two basic styles, lots of different models and features and so on, but scuba regulators come in two basic styles, and they are diaphragm and piston. Diaphragm regulators and piston regulators. Now, if you read the sales literature in the uh, different scuba catalogs, you see this all the time. First stage is a diaphragm regulator, the original that Jacques Cousteau invented, and it is the best been around for years. This is the kind of stuff you read. Number one, Jacques Cousteau did not invent it. Number two, it was around for a lot longer than I think it was around before Jacques Cousteau was born. He may have been one of the first people to adapt it for underwater use with the help of his engineer friend Emil Gagnon, but let's not get into that. However, it has been around the longest. The original scuba regulator was a diaphragm style. Does that make it better or worse? Ah, doesn't matter. However, the majority of regulators made today are piston, and there's a good practical reason for that. But here's what I want to do in this short video. I'm going to keep, try to keep it short. I'm going to show you the difference between the two. The main difference between the two regulators. Now, before we do that, we have to talk very briefly about what the first stage does. What's it for? Before we talk about the different styles, you know, if you're buying a car, is it being bought for a racing? That'll determine the kind of car you buy. Is it being bought to haul the soccer team around after school? Well, you don't buy a race car. You see? So there's, let's talk about what does the first stage do. It's very simple. The first stage has only one function. One reason that you have a first stage, and that is to take the tank pressure down to intermediate pressure. That's it. Reduce tank pressure to intermediate pressure. So whatever your tank pressure is, 2250, 3000, 3500, 45, doesn't matter. The tank pressure is your high pressure source of air. The second stage that goes into your mouth has to receive air from the first stage at what's called intermediate pressure. Intermediate pressure, for argument's sake, we're going to say is 150 psi. Okay? It can be anywhere from 125 to 160. And I'm just giving you a rough idea because different regulators are lower and some are higher for a variety of reasons. Not good or bad. 160 is not better than 125. However, so the first stage, single function, only has one thing to do. Take tank pressure, high pressure tank pressure, down to low pressure intermediate pressure. For our argument, it takes 3,000 to 150. That's all it does. And then the second stage, very, very important. It's the second stage where all the important stuff happens. It then takes that 150 that it's getting from the first stage down to ambient, meaning the pressure where you are. If you're in this room, it takes it down to 14.7 psi, atmospheric. If you're at 33 feet, it takes it to a higher pressure, so on. But all it depends on is that 150 coming from the first stage. That's all the first stage does. It takes 3,000 down to 150 and sends it to you through the hose to the second stage. That's all it does, okay? So, knowing that its function is very, very simple, let's take a look at the two different regulators. I'm just going to show you the differences and explain, if I can, why they are different and, 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 and uh, you can help maybe make a decision as to which might be better for you. Okay, here we go. I have, first of all, a popular, uh, I need you to zoom in here a bit, Kevin. Can you see my hands here? I have here a very popular uh, 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 first stage, uh, the diaphragm type of first stage, okay, diaphragm. Now, you can see this is a little bit different. This is a piston type first stage, but the, the difference in, in look doesn't matter because there are piston first stages that look just like this. 
and there are diaphragm first stages that look just like this. So the actual look, this looks like it's L-shaped, looks like it's bullet-shaped. That doesn't matter. Just forget that. doesn't matter. Let's take this diaphragm first stage. Very popular brand. Here we go. I'm going to take it apart. Okay? Almost completely apart. We'll take the knob out first. They all have a knob on them because this is a yoke style, which everybody knows is better than din. No, no, I didn't say that. No, no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just teasing you guys. If it's a din valve, then you'll have a din fitting on here. This is a yoke, so we have a yoke. Take the yoke knob off. There we take the yoke knob off. In behind the yoke, there's a filter. I'm not going to take the filter out. It's just a little centered bronze filter is what it's called, held in by a little spring clip. Okay, let's take some more stuff off of here. Okay, this is the adjustment nut. I've loosened this up already so it's easier. There's the adjustment nut. Knob, adjustment nut. Now underneath the adjustment nut is the spring. And then there is the, somewhere in there, let's take this off. This is part of the body. This is the part that holds the diaphragm in place. We'll take that off. And then we take off the diaphragm protector, or seat if you like. And then the diaphragm comes out. This is a diaphragm regulator, right? We have to have a diaphragm. There's the diaphragm. And then underneath the diaphragm is the plunger. Sometimes it's called a plunger, sometimes it's called a flat washer. And in the middle of the plunger is the pin. And a lot of diaphragm rayers, that pin, that little thing there is a separate piece. So this is actually two pieces. In this particular case, it's one. Underneath that, there's a seat carrier. We'll just take that out of there quickly. Now, keep in mind, uh, uh, folks watching here, that I've already loosened all this stuff in advance. This is not how easily a regulator comes apart. It's all been loosened. So there's the seat carrier. There's the seat itself with an O-ring. Let's go to the other side. Yep, got to go to the other side. Now, go to the other side, and we take out of here, we take out of here the um, seat base with its O-ring. And on top of the seat base, there's a spring, and there's a plunger. Make it all these bits and pieces. There's a plunger. Okay, there we go. S uh, spring and plunger. And so now, I don't know if you can see through there, Kevin. Can you actually see through there? There's nothing left in there. Now, there's a couple of small things still on here. I, I, I didn't take off the yoke, uh, off the port screws. I didn't take them off. Each of the different ports, the high-pressure ports and all the low-pressure ports, I didn't take those out. There's no need to because all regs are the same. Uh, piston or diaphragm, they pretty much all have the same two high pressure and four or five low pressure. So there you go. There's a fairly typical diaphragm regulator. Body with the yoke, I didn't take that off, filter. And then all this, I, won't, I won't go through them again. You can see them all there. So that's what, there's three, there's about, about 12 parts. We'll call it 12 parts. And then this is pretty typical. Some have a few more, some have a couple less, but it's pretty typical. All right, diaphragm regulator. Let's do this. Diaphragm regulator. Long yoke screw. Yoke. There we go. <laughs> yoke screw. Okay, let me put that like that. Yoke screw. <clears throat> okay, again, I will not take the actual yoke off. And down inside the yoke, there's a little clip holding the spring in. Don't need to take that off. And again, I will not take off all the port screws. You see them all around there? Don't need to. So now after you take off <clears throat> that, now you take off the cap. There's nothing else in there. Okay, we'll set that down there like so. <clears throat> Take off the cap, and then under the cap, there's that, and then there's a spring, and there's a piston. How's that? Now, if you know how piston regulators work, if you understand how piston regulators work, this is no big surprise. If you don't understand how piston regulators work, you're probably saying, what the, how can that simple thing do what all that is required to do in a diaphragm? Well, you have to understand that this, this is not the, the video for that. I can do that sometime. I'll explain about diaphragm regs, how they work, and piston regs, how they work, and then you'll know a bit better. But all I'm doing in this particular video is just showing you the basic difference. One of the most important, the, the, essentially the basic difference between a diaphragm and a piston. And that is simplicity. Simplicity. There are two benefits to simplicity. Okay? One is pretty obvious. Which of these two do you think costs the most? Mm-hmm. Add it up. Add it up. Twelve parts cost more than three. That's real simple math. So generally, a diaphragm regulator is markedly less expensive than a... Uh, sorry. <laughs> generally, a piston regulator is less expensive, noticeably less expensive, 
and a diaphragm regulator. Now, now before you say, well, I want the more expensive one, keep in mind what I said in the very beginning. What's the purpose of a first stage? To take air from 3,000 and make it 150. A diaphragm regulator does that very well, 3,000, 150. A piston regulator does it just as well, 3,000 to 150. There's no difference. It does its job perfectly well. It doesn't do it faster, better, quicker, cleaner, bluer, pinker. No, no change. 3,000 to 150. They both do the same job. So paying a whole lot of extra money for the simple reason that somebody has told you you want a diaphragm rig, really, think about it, may not make a lot of sense. The second reason why simpler is better, less likelihood of breaking down. Right. We have a great big heavy spring. You see it? And we have the piston. Piston is heavy and strong. Here we have a cap, spring, cap, a little rubber, a little wee pin, a little wee pin on here, a little seat carrier, the seat. Da, da, da. Which of these two regulators under the same uh, uh, circumstances, in the, the same exposure, the same number of dives, the same environments, which of these two, everything else being equal, do you suppose will last longer, will be more reliable? Generally, again, the piston regulator is noted for its reliability, durability, ruggability, ruggedability, is that a word? Ruggedness, more rugged, generally speaking. So there you go. Now there's more differences. And some regs have different features. But generally speaking, either the piston or the, the diaphragm reg will take 3,000 to 150. Same volume, same speed, same air, everything's exactly the same. They both do the same job. And now I've shown you the difference between the two. Generally speaking, the differences are complexity. The diaphragm has many, many more parts to accomplish the same job. The piston essentially has one part. If you don't count the spring, it only has one moving part. Cheaper and more reliable. Now there's a lot more to it. And maybe in the future, I'll share some more ideas on different types of regulators. We're going to talk as well about adjusting regulators. I'm going to show you how to adjust the first stages. Not much you can do there, but there's some adjustment can be done. And then I'll show you how to adjust the second stage, the critical one, the one that you actually feel that you breathe from. That should be interesting too. But there's the first step. Now you know some differences between the two types of regs. I hope that was interesting. Send some comments. If you have some comments, I'm sure there will be. But talk to you real soon. Take care, Alec Pierce, Scuba 2000 Tech Tips.